Oh, hello there. Here we are again. These Sundays keep coming around so quickly, don't you think? Coming up today, we'll be talking about lots of things, including meditation. It would appear that more and more people are taking up meditation and becoming more mindful. What about you? Do you ever meditate? We'll also be talking about driving and words and expressions connected with the road. With Mr. Steve, of course, who will be joining us today. Also, I will be testing Mr. Steve on his knowledge of road signs. And you are more than welcome to join in today on the live chat. After all, it's a Sunday afternoon here in the UK. It's just after two o'clock. And this is Live English. Do, 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 how are you? It's super duper Sunday. It's live English. Yes, here we go again. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? Are you happy? I really hope so. I'm feeling quite happy today because the weather is lovely. We aren't going outside, by the way. I should mention that straight away because we have lots of tiny flies, lots of insects in the air at the moment, causing all sorts of chaos. So sadly, we won't be outside live, but we will have a little look out the window in a few moments. So that's one thing to mention. Also, I'm very happy because it looks as if my hay fever has completely disappeared. I went out for a lovely walk yesterday and I didn't sneeze once, not once. So it would appear that the hay fever season for me has finally disappeared. I'm pretty thankful for that to be honest I'm so happy now I can walk outside and I don't have to worry about sneezing I don't have to worry about the pollen in the air everything is lovely the only thing I have to worry about now are all the tiny insects lots and lots of insects they are very very annoying they get everywhere in your eyes in your ears all over the place, in fact, in, in some places that I, I don't mention. So let's have a look out the window. Oh, just to prove how lovely things are today. And there it is, a live view. So that is the view at this very moment out of my window. A lot of people ask, Mr. Duncan, is that really a live view? Yes, it is. And I will prove it. I will now put my hand in front of the camera. So just a moment whilst I go over to the camera just to prove that it is live. So now you know it is a live view that you have on your screen. Let's have another angle, shall we? Because it's such a lovely day. It seems a shame to waste the view. So there looking across into the distance. Ah, you can see the birds flying around. The birds are going crazy at the moment. I think the birds you can see at the moment are house martins. Can you see all the house martins flying around? And what they are doing is feeding. They are flying around and they are picking the insects out of the air as they fly. So those those birds you can see flying around at the top of the screen. They've gone now, but they'll be back in a second. They are actually house martins and there are lots of them at the moment. There they go again. <laughs> so I hope you're enjoying that live view as well. Lots of things coming up today. Oh, my goodness. I don't know where to start. We have lots of stuff coming up. And don't forget, we are only on for one and a half hours. Yes, we have shortened the live English to one and a half hours. 
in around about 20 minutes mr. Steve will be here yes mr. Steve is back of course he wasn't here on on Wednesday last Wednesday he was away and I had a really good time but I have a strange feeling mr. Steve might have a few things to say about my behavior on Wednesday night that's what I think anyway also coming up we are talking about something that has become very trendy very fashionable at the moment do you know what it is it is meditation a lot of people seem to be taking up meditation as a way of coping with life in the 21st century a lot of people say that life now is too hectic there is so much going on we have to have some sort of escape from our daily routine so it would appear more and more people are getting in touch with their their mind they are becoming mindful it's a great word and I'm sure it's one that you've heard a lot over recent times so mindfulness talking of mindfulness here is something to help your mind float free so this is the view the other night looking across one of the fields near to where I live and you can see in the distance the Sun has already set and if I'm not mistaken I think that particular field has barley so I think that is actually barley growing in that field and there you can see looking into the distance lots and lots of crops waiting to be reaped and some of the farmers have actually started collecting and gathering their crops already so it would appear that many of the farmers are actually doing their their reaping they are bringing in their crop early and the reason for that is all of the hot weather that we are experiencing at the moment yes I think that's barley I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong but <laughs> if I'm not mistaken I believe that is barley in the field <laughs> I have a feeling someone is going to correct me about that and talking of farmers yes the farmers at the moment are bringing in their crops and here is a scene that I filmed this week you can see there is something called a combine harvester combine harvester it's a great piece of equipment that not only takes the seeds takes the grain but it also leaves all of the stuff that isn't needed behind so a combine harvester is an amazing piece of kit <laughs> it's an amazing machine so there it is in the distance let's have another look another view getting a little bit closer now oh yes so you can see the combine harvester is collecting all of the grain and out of the back it is actually dropping all of the chaff or chaff at the back so all of the things that aren't needed are expelled from the back of the combine harvester and there you can see the combine harvester moving along gathering the crop and as I mentioned earlier the reason why they are doing it early is because of the weather oh my goodness and guess what this week guess what there have been threats of hose pipe bans can you believe that so there is actually talk at the moment of banning hose pipes so it looks as if we might be on the verge of a water shortage here in the UK so certain parts of the UK the water levels are dropping dramatically because of all this hot weather although having said that we did have a little bit of rain yes it's true we had a little bit of rain so the rain has come and gone and now we are back to the hot weather again and apparently next week it's going to get even hotter 
Can you believe it? It's going to get even hotter next week with temperatures apparently going as high as 33 degrees. <laughs> now, I've traveled to many countries. I've traveled to countries like Malaysia, where it gets very hot there. And the average temperature in Malaysia is about 33 degrees. So next week, it's going to be as hot here in England as it is in the tropics of Malaysia. I can't believe it, <laughs> but it's true. Oh, I see the live chat is very, very busy at the moment. Let's have a look at the live chat, shall we? Or else I will get told off. People will be saying, Mr. Duncan, can we have the live chat, please, on the screen? OK, then. And there it is. The live chat is up and running. And let's have a look who was first. I don't know. I have no idea who was first today, but we are all about to find out. Shirin. Congratulations, Shirin. You were first on the live chat. Obaid. Obaid or Obeyed. Revision was second. Blue Thunder. You were third. And Alam Alamgir Hussain was fourth. Also, hello to Layla, also to Aguila and also to Patricia. Hello, Patricia. A big bonjour to you watching in France. Blue Thunder says hi to everyone, including Alamgir. That's very nice. I like it when people in the live chat say hello to each other. Isn't that nice? Sujin. Hello, Sujin. Nice to see you as well. Zeng Zenek is here. Hello to you. Also, hello from Egypt. Safia watching right now in Egypt. Hello to you. Jamelia. Jamelia is here. Mika Ode says hello from a very hot Japan. Yes, I I have seen on the news. Now, after all of that rain, after all the rain that they had in Japan now, they are having a heat wave. So it would appear that it's also very hot in Japan. So not only here in England, but also in other countries as well. So normally in the summer we get we get high temperatures. That's true. But very rarely does it get as high as 33 degrees here in the UK. But next week it's going to get very hot. Sukat is here. Hello. Big hello to Argentina. Also, Irene, I think I've said hello to you as well. Chris Morales. Hello, Chris. Nice to see you. Welcome back. Kevin Chung is here. Hello. And a big hello to China. Wow. I must be honest. I don't get many people watching on the live stream in China. So maybe you are one of just a few <laughs> who can watch because, of course, as I often mention, YouTube is blocked in China. So sadly, I cannot be viewed, but there are some people who can get around the great firewall of China and they can watch me. So thank you, Kevin Chung, for joining me today. Lovely. Also, Louis, Louis Mendez is here. Hello, Louis. Nice to see you again. Or Luis. I still haven't got the hang of your name. <laughs> Hung Tran is here as well. Hello to you. Tias. Hello, Tias. Nice to see you again. Also, Avtar and Helena. Wow. So many people today joining me. Also, we have... Sujin. Hello, Sujin, watching in South Korea. I am very happy to hear that your hay fever has disappeared. Yes, I'm glad as well, because it means I can go outside now without sneezing. It's very embarrassing. There's nothing more embarrassing than going into a cafe or a restaurant and then you start sneezing as soon as you sit down. 
and everyone is looking at you they don't like it you see you're not really you're not really supposed to sneeze in a cafe or a restaurant you're not supposed to sneeze in there you see yes my hay fever is gone Anna Maria nice to see you as well Prince's Queen is here hello Prince's Queen where is it do you mean where am I now I am now broadcasting live to you from England I am now broadcasting live from England and just in case you are wondering when I am on you can catch me every Sunday 2 p.m. UK time and every Wednesday yes I am on twice a week Wednesday at 10 p.m. UK time so there there is no excuse for not knowing Alam Gia says it is evening here now that place is much Wenlock in England yes that is where I live a lovely little town very sleepy very quiet a very serene place to live Sukat says I saw a photo of the house Martins and yes it looks like a swallow yes that's true swallows Swifts and also house Martins they all look very similar Silvana is here hello Silvana hello to you as well nice to see you Chris says I hope your day was great and lovely I've just had a fantastic dinner of beef and vegetables with delicious sauce <gasps> oh can I just say that I haven't eaten anything yet I've eaten nothing today I haven't eaten a thing so I'm I'm feeling a little bit hungry at the moment of gun of gun music says hello to all the people who are watching this fabulous teacher all over the world yes I am now broadcasting around the world live on YouTube so if it is your first time here please let me know Pedro says Mr Duncan do you know which country is the hottest country of the world well I, I normally think of maybe India India or maybe parts of the Middle East I know they can get very hot sometimes 40 or maybe 50 degrees 50 Celsius that's very hot so yes and also welcome Pedro welcome again Hassan is here watching in Kenya oh hello there can I send a special hello to Kenya welcome to the live chat 25 past 2 on a Sunday afternoon I hope your Sunday is going very well because mine is it's not going too badly at all I always watch your videos says Aline Aline Oliveira thank you very much for that I'm glad to hear it yes there are lots and lots of video lessons on my YouTube channel and you can watch them anytime you want they are all free and my playlist is underneath this video so let's have another look at something oh yes the back of the house the cows and the bulls all of the cattle are still there can you see them there they are the lovely cattle at the back of the house aren't they lovely and unfortunately at the moment in this weather I think they are getting very hot but thank goodness they have plenty of water in their field to drink although that might change soon because we are about to have a water shortage here in the UK certain parts of this country are running short of water so it would appear that over the next few weeks we might have some water shortages here in England on the live chat Hasna says hello hello to you we have been hot with the weather these days the hottest temperature in Japan today 
was 39 39 celsius that is very very hot thank you mika for telling me that well at least next week it won't be that hot here but it still will be quite hot 33 degrees next week here in england hello to my english professor from the university of san augustine thank you very much thank you to chris yes why the bulls don't have horns well actually they do have horns but the cattle you are looking at or the cattle you were looking at is young so all of the cattle you can see here they are all very young but i can assure you they do have horns if you look very closely you can see the horns but at the moment they are not very big because these are just young cattle they are not very old so that's the reason why i am hungry and i have to eat something alamgir yes well if you feel hungry you must have something to eat i know i feel hungry at the moment i wonder if mr steve will bring me something nice to eat i don't know i i'm hoping he does <laughs> you never know today we're talking about mindfulness mr. Steve is a big fan of mindfulness and meditation and it does appear to be something that is becoming it is becoming very popular at the moment so do you ever meditate do you ever become mindful of your consciousness and of course your subconsciousness yes so do you ever do that all that coming later on also mr. Steve will be talking about words connected with driving and being on the road and the road in general and I will be testing mr. Steve on his knowledge of road signs as well so all that coming up later on I love cows <laughs> says blue thunder do you really well that's nice I like that very much what's the difference between bullocks and cows well cows give milk they are the female of the bovine species bulls and bullocks are male are male bovine animals so the bulls are adults and the bullocks have had their let's just say they've had certain things removed from their body certain things have been cut off <laughs> maybe mr. Steve will explain that later maybe why haven't you eaten yet it's not healthy not to eat anything until now go and grab something to eat thank you simona for that yes i will get something to eat in a moment because we are about to have a look at something we are about to take a look at something i did way back in 2013 and this is to get us in the mood for talking about driving and being in a car do you remember my dunktober lessons well we are now going to take a look at one of my mr. Duncan dunktober lessons that I made way back in 2013 and in this lesson we are going to be driving around in the car 31 days of dunktober day 13 hi everybody and good morning welcome to day 13 of 31 days of dunktober today i am doing something a little different because i'm going out on the road here we are driving through the middle of much wenlock this is the main road going into much wenlock but we're not going to much Wenlock today. Oh no, we're going somewhere a little further. Come on, Grandad, put your foot down. Now here 
here, something I've never done before. I'm making a lesson in the car while the car is moving. Today I'm going to Banbury and the reason why I'm going there is because I'm going to see Mr. Steve's mum because she was in hospital earlier in the year and uh, I'm going today to try and cheer her up and perhaps also she'll be cheering me up as well because she's lovely. A lot of people ask me, Mr. Duncan, why don't you have a car? Why don't you drive? And, well, there isn't a simple answer. It's just probably because I've never really been interested in cars, to be honest, never. I used to play with cars when I was a kid, but I never really grew fond of cars. I never really got into them in a big way. My passion as a teenager was motorbikes. I loved motorbikes a lot and I used to ride a motorbike as well. A couple of my friends rode motorbikes. One sadly died and the other was seriously injured on his. But I continued to ride mine until one day when I had almost an accident. <laughs> Not quite an accident, but it scared me enough to get rid of my motorbike. After that one terrible incident, I never rode the motorbike again, and I sold it. So these days, I like to sit in the car as a passenger. It's much more comfortable. And of course, Mr. Steve is a very good driver. There he is, behind the wheel, it's Mr. Steve. Now don't look at the camera, Mr. Steve, because I don't really want the car to crash into a tree. Thank you very much. There he is, Mr. Steve. He's a fantastic car driver. He's probably the best driver I know. Do you know sometimes when you're in a car and you're with someone and their driving is so terrible that, that your buttocks clench together? You're actually holding onto the seat with your fingers because you're uh, so afraid that the car might crash at any moment. Well, Mr. Steve is not that type of driver. He's a very good driver. We are becoming very creative with these angles, aren't we? <laughs> there is a phrase in English, to lose your nerve. If you lose your nerve, then you become terrified. You suddenly lose your confidence. You lose your nerve. You can also lose your bottle. It's a great phrase, that. So if you suddenly get scared, or you suddenly panic, you can say, I'm sorry, I've lost my bottle. I've lost my nerve. Don't worry, I haven't lost my nerve today. I'm still feeling very confident. And I hope you are too. own a car? Would you like to own a car? Do you know how to drive a car? Would you like to one day drive a car? Some people don't like driving. They hate it. They hate sitting in the traffic jams. They hate waiting in the queues. Driving a car can be a very stressful thing to do. Just in case you thought I had forgotten about them. Here are today's special hellos. A big hello to Kurt, Gushame, Helen, Irfan, Xavier, Hank, Eamon, Rajashekar, Khalid, Gemma, Adilson, Fenny. Don't forget tomorrow 
I will begin saying hello to places. Where are you now? Please let me know. Okay, we're just coming into Banbury now. Our day is about to begin, and this is where I leave you. This is Mr. Duncan in England on day 13 of 31 days of Dunktober, saying, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you tomorrow bright and early for day 14. This is Mr. Duncan in the car in England, saying thank you for watching. And of course, to ta for now. Dip, 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 it's a Sunday afternoon, it's a beautiful day here, it's so hot and it's going to get hotter next week. So I thought I would put my super cool sunglasses on and guess what, Mr. Steve has decided to do the same thing. Typical. What do you mean Mr. Duncan, they were my glasses and I gave you a pair. Oh I see, okay. Because I was out with friends this week. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I was out with friends uh, this week and we went to a pub. And uh, if you bought a J2O, <laughs> you got a free pair of sunglasses. Sorry, are we being sponsored by J2O? So, well, not yet. Oh, okay. But we may be in the future. Who knows? <laughs> it seems highly unlikely now because we've just done it for free. And uh, they were giving free <laughs> pairs of glasses. So my friend bought a J2O. A non-alcoholic drink, and uh, I, Mr. Duncan, why haven't you taken the t this off? It off. Oh, you look silly, Mr. Duncan. Whereas I look, look this fashionable. This is not a label. This is a nose protector. This keeps the sun off your nose. Don't you know these things? Sometimes I worry about Mr. Steve. He doesn't seem to know anything. This is this is to protect your nose. You 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 put it up when you don't want it. You put it up there. And then you put it there when you want to protect your nose. Actually, from... some people leave the labels on their fashionable clothes. If they've got a piece of uh, fashion wear that uh, they're very proud of and they want to show off, they sometimes leave the tags on. Do they not, Mr Duncan? I've seen that. They do? They do because they want everybody to know. They want this tag to flap around. People go, oh, what's that? Oh, it's a... Versace or it's a it's some of the high fashion they want people to, to envy them and look at them and say oh look at look at that person in that high fashion clothing I'm jealous of them that's what they want you see whereas these I don't think are any particular make <laughs> then uh, they are not <laughs> it says something about find your mojo it says on here Yes. Find your mojo. Welcome to Mr. Steve reads everything out that he sees in front of him. No, well, that's a useful because what does find your mojo mean? If, if I was to say to you, Mr. Duncan, why don't you find your mojo? First of all, what does mojo mean? Well, it's your, your sort of energy, your spark, isn't it? So if you say, where's your mojo? It, it, it's, it's, it's the something that... Uh, separates you from other people. It's something special that you've got—a a spark, something special. I always thought it was your. So, uh, I always thought. I always thought it was your sexual energy. Not necessarily. No, yeah. it doesn't have to be that. Because, uh, for example, at work, if you were doing very well, and then for a number of years you stopped doing well at something, say you were in sales and you didn't do very, had a few years where you didn't do very well, and then suddenly. Uh, you got all your enthusiasm back uh, for the job and you went out and you did very well. People would say to you, oh, Stephen, you've got your mojo back. In fact, they did say that to me once. You've got your mojo back and you go to the top of the charts and you do very well. I think it can mean 
uh, sort of sexual excitement. Well, or I re- sort of, but it's more. I think it can be used in all sorts of ways. Mojo. You just get your, you get your energy back okay. and your enthusiasm for Cause, doing cause, something. Because I remember in Austin Powers, Austin Powers Two. Austin Powers had his mojo taken away. They took it away. It can mean that. And he wasn't sexually attractive anymore. He was going, hey, baby, hey. Well, it can mean that, yes. Shagadelic. You, uh, you lose your sexual allure for some reason. Maybe it's just an, your expression is you, you, you're feeling down or you're not enthusiastic about life anymore. Suddenly you get that enthusiasm back. And you've got your mojo back and you can do anything. Uh, so there we go. Mr Duncan, are you going to take the... Uh, he's going to leave them on, isn't he? I know what Mr Duncan's like. He's going to leave them on the entire time, so I'm going to put mine back on as well. Well, it's a hot, sunny day. Look See, look, at... I'm coordinating. I've got green with green. Yeah, look look outside today. It's amazing. There is the view outside. That's a live view. The sun is out. The, the clouds are clearing. It is an absolute scorching day. And the weather... It's going to get even hotter next week. It is going to be as hot as Malaysia. It's pretty much the same view <laughs> that you've been showing for the last two months. <laughs> I would, I would venture to suggest, Mr. Duncan, that uh, whenever you show the view, because we've had such good weather, it hasn't been that much different. Any, anyway, Mr. Duncan, I've got a bone to pick with you. Look, look, there we go. Look, that, well, that's a different view. What, what, what do you want to see? I mean, it's just showing good weather. Do you want to see a big pile of dog poop or something? You know, there's plenty of that in no, the village. I'm just saying that there's the plenty view of that. that there's you plenty of showing there's has plenty been very of very similar. There's plenty there's that, 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 there's plenty of dog poop to film. You know, I could film some of that if you want to see something different. But you know, I just wanted to show the nice views that were around today. And if I talk long enough, Mr. Steve might forget that he has a bone. I've got a bone to pick oh. with you, Mr. Duncan. A bone to pick, which means I've got something I want, to, something I'm annoyed about that you've done that I want to mention to you and get off my chest because I was away on Wednesday. Anyone watching on Wednesday, I happen to see because a friend of mine watches your videos and showed me what you were doing while I was out on Wednesday night. I don't know what you mean. Inside my car, mocking me. You are wasting water in the garden with a hose. And what's this? What, Mr. Duncan, is this? Actually, it's quite uh, its quite realistic, isn't it? Mm. It's life-size. <laughs> what is this? And you were kicking it around the garden. It's a life-size Mr. Steve's head. Do you like that? that that's, that's better than the real thing. There you go. You just, you just stay there and I'll, 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 I'll animate it. Hello. My name is Mr. Steve and I like meditating, I like eating vegetables and sometimes I like to chase things around in a field because I'm a bit weird like that. So, Mr. Duncan... Can we put glasses on him, can we? Oh, yes, you, you've, you're doing a really good job there, Steve. It's because it's opposite, I can't do it. It's, it's like a mirror image. Yes, there you go. Let's get rid of that. You've got the real thing this afternoon. We might sell those, by the way, if you want a Mr. Steve mask, because we're, I've, I've got another one over here. Wait there. What are you doing, Mr. Duncan? I've got some. If, if anyone wants a Mr. Steve mask that they, can, they, they want to wear, look, it's life size. It's actually the same size as Mr. Steve's face. Look. In fact, that looks better. In fact, for the rest of the live stream, I will just hold that there in front of Mr. Steve. There we go. Let's see how long it takes before your arms start to ache. I think I've distracted him enough. To, so, to... yes, chopping the heads off my flowers. Well, <laughs> uh, which I flower? Saw it all. Which flower are you talking about? I'm talking about the flower that you well know I've been growing and nurturing and feeding yes for many many weeks now because it was given to me by a friend what, what is the name of that flower it's uh, i want to say begonia but it isn't i keep giving it the wrong name so the flower that you're so so in love with you can't even remember the name of it it's a daisy <laughs> you were near it's dahlia dahlia i ah, just testing well done mr duncan no, well done you weren't testing me but look look what's happened to your dahlia it's gone all floppy and limp 
I think it's it's had its time. As it looks say. like I think you've killed it. No, I haven't. I've been watering <laughs> it, but I think it was so energetic to begin with. It has now run out of energy, and I think that's it. I think that flower or plant is now spent. I will let it die back and then replant it again next year. It looks as if that plant has lost its mojo. <laughs> it definitely has lost its mojo, yes. <laughs> In fact, that's how I feel today. I, when I woke up this morning, I felt all floppy and droopy. <coughs> oh, excuse me, Mr Duncan. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. That's lovely. Mm. Mr Steve just coughed in my ear. I also saw a lovely video that, uh, was it Tias? Yes. That put together this wonderful video with the help of, of many of your uh, loyal YouTube watchers. And what are you doing, Mr Duncan? Eating? It's so rude, isn't it? Don't you think it's very rude of him to eat? While well, I'm trying to convey... I'm talking... I'm, I'm hungry. What I thought was uh, I'm hungry. a magnificent video that T.S. had put together. I'm hungry. And it was in celebration of your two years on YouTube, which I thought was wonderful. It must have taken many hours to put that together and to coordinate all the different people. I think Belarus, who was involved... Uh, who else was involved? Arthur. Was it Arthur? There were quite a few people involved in putting this video together. Uh, Mika, Sukat, Albert, Belarusia, anybody else? Albert, Albert, Ann. Lots of people were involved. And I think it was a wonderful uh, thing for them to do to celebrate your two years on li doing live streams on YouTube. I feel like I'm in the Pet Shop um, Boys. The Pet Shop Boys often looked like this. They had dark sunglasses and they looked very serious. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have brought these home. Pedro also put a video on, which I saw, which was very good, showing how how well his English has become over the last uh, few years. Yes, we had a lot of lovely comments, actually, on Wednesday uh, because Pedro sent me a message and mm. he asked, is my English good enough? And I thought it was amazing. And so did many of the people on the live chat. Talking of live chat, Mr Duncan, oh, talking you haven't shown me the live chat yet. Mr Steve always gets very excited about the live chat. So here it comes. The, oh. live, the live chat is here. So let's have a little recap. Apparently some people are interested in buying Mr Steve's face. OK, well, <laughs> it's uh, very expensive, of course. Needless to say. Mr Steve is a desperate driver, am I? Mika says, I love driving a car. I used to ride a motorbike. Well, Mika, you are not the only one who used to ride a motorbike. I also used to ride a motorcycle as well. Sekistar points out that uh, I own a Mercedes. That is correct, but it's quite old. It's quite an old car now. It's eight years old. And can you believe this? I have... It's been a very reliable car, I've got to say. It's been very good value for money because in eight years I could have had two or three other cars in that space of time, but I haven't. And it's now racked up, as we say, racked up uh, 176,000 <laughs> miles on the clock. That's a lot of miles. Or to put it another way, I would say somewhere around 200,000 kilometres. So in your car you have done 200,000 kilometres? Yes, wow. more than that, in fact. In eight years, uh, it's, so uh, that shows you if you uh, buy something of quality, it will last a long time. And I think there's many years left in it yet. Very nice. So I'm going to keep driving it uh, for the time being, Mr Duncan, until I find something else that uh, takes my fancy. Tatiana is here. Hello, Tatiana. Nice to see you here today. I haven't seen you on the live chat for a long time watching in Ukraine. Well, thank you very much for joining me. From Odessa. Odessa. There was a film Ugh. called The Odessa Files. Yeah. What was it about? Years ago. It was some kind of spy film. Spy film. Who was in it? Michael Caine. Hello. My name is Michael Caine. Not a lot of people know that. Not, not, lot of, not a lot of people know that. <laughs> yes, it was a film probably made in the 1960s, I would say. The Odessa Files. The Odessa Files. It was a kind of... Uh, spy Cold War sort of Americans or British <laughs> against the Russian type film it doesn't sound as if I you know say. it doesn't is it doesn't sound as if you know the plot of that film well it's a spy film you're being very nasty to me again today Mr. Duncan I'm not, I'm not you being, are I'm not being nasty Sergio 
has spotted your driving mr. Steve is a desperate driver what does that mean I'm not a desperate driver <laughs> <laughs> oh, a vodka man is a drinking vodka and drive and on his bicycle at the same time he's a very happy man I'm not surprised you shouldn't drink and cycle it's bad for you well I was out last night so I had to be careful not to drink and drive I was out again mr. Duncan yes Alex socializing we don't care about your socializing Alex oh, that's <laughs> very nice mr. Duncan in that case I'll go every night Alex says in my country many people become very aggressive when they are driving yes just like mr. Steve mr. not anymore mr. Steve gets very aggressive he sometimes shouts and screams hello Mika he, he sounds his horn beep hello, beep cheering. Beep, beep. hello Sergio hello everybody that's saying hello uh, in case I miss somebody apparently in Japan at the moment it's boiling hot I saw that I saw that and there we go because Sue cats come up now that's reminded me yet again that I have yet to watch uh, superlicious or uh, what's it <laughs> petrolicious. petrolicious that's it I've still got to uh, interestingly <laughs> enough I'm going to talk about petrol later on oh. uh, and words connected with uh, with cars and driving yes something else we mentioned briefly earlier was uh, meditation has become very popular I don't know if you've noticed Steve but there are lots and lots of websites now lots and lots of people promoting meditation and something called mindfulness mindfulness which is something that has been around for a few years but actually not many people are aware of but these days more and more people are becoming very aware of the way they think and the way they react to things so so mindfulness when we when we talk about mindfulness what do we mean it means uh, being aware really if you're mindful of something you're aware of it mm -hmm. so you're in the moment and uh, mindfulness is a, is, a, is a kind of relaxation technique involved to try and help people overcome anxiety or stress yes uh, and it's designed to quieten down the mind from all the all, all the all the chatter that goes on constantly in our heads mm. I see at the moment you see we're very mindful at the moment what we're doing is mindful because we are concentrating 100% on what we're doing because we have to otherwise we'll look foolish uh, and as a result of that I'm not everything else that's in your head I'm not concentrating on anything <laughs> but when you're the average human I've forgotten how many thoughts we have a day it's thousands of so you wake up in the day and you find yourself cleaning your teeth or doing something like preparing a meal and you're constantly your mind is turning over with events uh, and you're having conversations with people sometimes past conversations or, or, or made up situations your mind is constantly active so right now as I'm doing this I'm aware that I'm not thinking of anything else apart from just doing this live stream with you so this is probably an example of mindfulness and what the techniques that they use and there are many books on this uh, are, are basically to try and focus on parts of your body so you start by focusing on your feet and you concentrate and work your way up and you know, do all sorts of things like that. Your feet? Well, you start, I think you can start with your feet and you work up to your, to your arms and you have to focus very carefully on all the feelings, everything that's taking place in that particular part of your body. So you focus, so it's focusing your mind on something, just in the same way that meditation uh, gets you to focus on a candle flame or on your breath or on your breathing uh, it as a way because if you focus on that one thing for say 10 or 15 minutes you it quietens down your mind from all the useless chatter that's going on and it's a useful technique uh, to try and help uh, with stress anxiety and just to just to calm down so would it be fair to say that m much of the chatter is negative not necessarily but when it is negative that's when it can lead to psychological problems so if you are worried about something worried about your appearance for example which which many people are you might worry about something about you that you don't like 
and then you then you might think well what are people thinking about it and you fantasize about that and about what people might be thinking then you feel bad about it. the more you focus on some anything that the more it grows in your mind so if you mm. focus on a negative thing that negative thing will get bigger and bigger and take on proportions which are sort of out of proportion to to what they really are. So, for example, you might have a little spot on your face, mm -hmm. for example, and you might one day look at that in the mirror and think, oh, I don't like that. That looks a bit ugly. Oh, and then all you and then you focus on you keep thinking about that for days, weeks, months. You go to sleep thinking about it. And then every time you look in the mirror, you see it and, and it takes on proportion so that then makes you feel bad about yourself and those that those sort of negative thoughts over a long period of time can can cause stress and anxiety uh, and uh, the way one of the ways one of the ways to alleviate that uh, is to try meditation or mindfulness mm. uh, so it's very interesting how it's become a very big thing there are lots of companies now uh, even on YouTube you will see lots of videos now being featured on YouTube and they all relate to the same subject, which is meditation, relaxation techniques. So all of these things, it's become a very, very, I think it's safe to say it's become very big business. So relaxing yes. yourself has become very big business. There are lots of people holding classes, yoga, meditation, all sorts of things. And also lots of books, lots of literature available as well about how to meditate and relax. But the reason is because life has become so hectic. I think life now is quite hectic, don't you? Yes, and of course, social media is often blamed for a lot of stress amongst young people mm -hmm. because uh, I know when, when you and I grew up, anybody of our age, uh, you, you didn't really, you didn't have mobile phones, you didn't have social media. <laughs> so uh, you went home and then you were with your family who, who loved you and cared for you. And there was no negative influences. But now you go home, children go home and they're on the Internet, they're on social media and there's people comparing who that looks like to somebody else. And you you're seeing all these beautiful people and you're comparing them with yourself and it can cause stress. There's bullying online, isn't there? I mean, when we were at school, if you were bullied at school, at least it only happened at school. Mm. You went home and then you were with your family for 12 well, hours. I don't, I don't know. You could get quite uh, a lot of bullying in your family. Maybe, maybe, well, your you could, but maybe, maybe you get it when you get home with your parents. Maybe they start bullying you as well. Well, um, yeah, but I'm, what I'm saying is that now, if you if say you let's say you've got a, a nice family, which I think most families are probably supportive of their children, but you go you get say you get bullied at school, but then you go home and you've got twelve hours and you're not being bullied at school. Whereas now you can go home and be on social media and be bullied twenty four seven. So things in the past were so much so, better. Uh, we had we had less bullying. We would only, we that. would only get beaten up for sh for short periods of time of the day, whereas nowadays we get so beaten Duncan, up. You've got to treat this subject seriously. We get beaten up all the time on the internet, but at least on the internet you don't get a black eye. Yeah, so there's no let up now. There's no chance to relax. There's many ways to relax. People go to the gym. People uh, go for running. Exercise is a very good stress reliever. Uh, because it's uh, as you if you do vigorous exercise, it, it, it puts endorphins into your system and uh, mm. feel good uh, chemicals into your brain and makes you feel good. And uh, there's many ways you can meditate. Uh, you can join classes where there's the socialising is a very good way to uh, to relieve stress. There's many ways. There's no one method that works for everybody. Mm. You've got to find what works for you. There's many different uh, ways. Many different ways of relaxing and calming yourself down i mean some people just like to go for a walk or go some people walk. some people listen to music or maybe watch tv for a while and that relaxes them so mm. so it, it, different things work in different ways for different people sometimes you want all of them some people of course turn to alcohol or drugs uh to relieve their stress um but quite you know. quite often those things create even more trouble and problems well down the road they do yes i know i'm not i'm not condoning hmm. Uh, alcohol or drugs. Can, as a can way I just to say that Miss, Mr. Steve and Mr. Duncan are not promoting <laughs> drugs or alcohol? Can we just make sure that we're clear on that? Because YouTube, you should be so sensitive at the moment. They get very sensitive about everything. So, shall we just say that drugs and alcohol are bad? Okay. Uh, although, if you saw me last night, you would wonder what I was getting up to, Mr. Duncan. I was with a group of friends who I haven't seen for a long time. And let's just say they're lively. 
And, uh, well, if I hadn't come home last night, I may I could have been really worse for wear today. I could have been easily influenced into what you overindulging what you, alcohol. What are you suggesting? Um, are you suggesting that drugs and alcohol were being exchanged? Certainly alcohol was. But there you go. But I didn't get involved because I was driving. Great. And I had to come home. So you, luckily, because I knew I had this live stream that I had to perform with Mr. Duncan tomorrow and I needed to be at peak mental and physical condition uh, because of the sheer strain and energy necessary to do these live streams with Mr. Duncan. <laughs> but anyway, that's fine. We, we, I love it, really. It's three o'clock, everyone, and this is Live English. Mr. Steve and me, Mr. Duncan, live on YouTube. I hope you are having a good day. In we Int, int what? Interestingly, I exercise, they say relieve stress. It does. But I think you have to choose the right type of exercise. I find if I just go for a walk, my mind is still very active. I don't find walking relieves stress because walking, I think, is so easy to do. Your body does it automatically. And so you're still thinking about all the stressful events. Whereas if you do something like, for example, if I go swimming... Because I find swimming very difficult, it takes a lot of my mental powers to make sure I'm not drowning in the pool. And it, there's a lot more going on. And I find that totally switches my brain off swimming. Oh, OK. Uh, whereas walking doesn't. Because I think it's just you need more mental energy to, to, to do swimming. So, I find. So, so if you go swimming with things on your mind, you're likely to drown. No, it's just that when I find if I'm swimming, because I find it. If you do, if it's something's hard to do, oh, okay. like this is, is quite hard to do. So you have to concentrate 100%. So I'm not thinking about any problems I've got at the moment. Not that I've got many. Well, there's one. Uh, but, but, you know, being here live means I, don't, I can't think about that. Because if I was to think about that, I wouldn't be in the moment and people would wonder what I was doing. Uh, so, uh, there, so there you go. Sujin likes to relax. Sujin likes to relax with sewing. That's it. You, everybody needs to find a way to relax. You can have a hobby that relaxes you. Patricia says yes. Yes, drink some beers. Uh, one beer a day. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Lots of people have a little tod a little um, toddle. Is it not toddle? A toddle. <laughs> a tot of alcohol before they go to bed, for example. I I'm going to have a toddle of beer. Uh, Mina says, are drugs allowed in England? Uh, no, they're not. They're all illegal. Well, well, some some are illegal, but they're they're not illegal, if that makes sense. Well, alcohol is legal, uh, but there's a, but for example, marijuana. So the, there pot, is a weed. There is a very active debate at the moment here in the UK for what they call <laughs> medicinal marijuana. Now. I don't know how. What's the difference between medicinal marijuana and just marijuana? Surely it's just the same thing. It's like it's like saying medicinal. No. It's like saying medicinal alcohol. So you get a bottle of whiskey and you say, "Oh, it's okay. I'm not feeling very well. I'm going to have this medicine," and it's whiskey. No, with uh, no, that's different because with what they've discovered with marijuana is that there are many many chemicals or, or, or drugs. Uh, in that particular plant and there are the psychoactive ones that make you that give you the, the, the euphoric feeling uh, but if you but there are lots of other chemicals in there which can have a bet have been shown to have a beneficial medicinal uh, effect and so uh, medical marijuana has had the the psychoactive bits taken out but it's the, so you don't get a high from it but the the medicinal factors or chemicals are still retained within it uh -huh. uh, so yes yeah, so if you go to the if you're i don't know whether you can have i don't know whether you can get marijuana prescribed medicinally you in the cannot UK. in the, at the moment it, uh, it isn't allowed but they are planning on introducing some measures that will allow marijuana to be prescribed for certain illnesses or ailments i believe things like I think dementia, I want to say dementia and other things that, that it, it is supposed to allow the body to be more active, that, that it does something with the nerves or chemicals in the brain. But um, 
anyway let's Belarus not... is having a party yes I'm sure because it's it was Belarusia's birthday last Wednesday well we did we get an invite well no we're too far away yeah but we could have got an invite anyway well I think I think <laughs> I think we always we always get an invite I think so if we put Belarus is in Argentina I think is that right mm -hmm. or is it South mm -hmm. America so uh, anyway we have we got time to fly over how long does it take about eight hours probably 12 Argentina, hours Argentina is South America isn't it? it is yes uh, but I was trying to be more precise as to the exact location uh, yeah, we, I was at a party last night. Yes. I thought I could do two parties in a row, but I'm quite happy to, to, to go. We are talking about something very interesting today because, as we saw earlier, sorry, I'm eating a biscuit because I'm very hungry. He's very rude, isn't so, he? Eating I've, while he's alive. I, I've eaten some biscuits. I was so hungry, but all I was doing was taking the advice from, from, from you out there. You said, Mr Duncan, you must get something to eat. So that's what I'm doing. I'm eating something now. Somebody said earlier that uh, that I'm a lot uh, fitter than Mr. Duncan. And don't you remember how what you discovered seeing yourself on camera from a side profile? I was I was a surprised. Side profile. Uh, I was last week. Mr. I was. Duncan. Yes. Yes. We've got it. <laughs> I, I, I was I was surprised to see that I am a little bit fat. I seem to have put a bit of weight on and I don't know if Mr. Steve is trying to drop a hint, but last week he brought he bought this. He bought this jar of mayonnaise. And I don't know if you can see, but the shape, the shape of the jar looks very similar to my stomach at so, the moment. So if you eat too much mayonnaise, I think this is what you end up looking like. This is the shape that you eventually become. So they've uh, mayonnaise is a highly calorific uh, dressing uh, full of fat and they've shaped the jar interestingly enough even the jar looks like a fat person it looks like a fat person so they're almost saying if you eat too much of this this is what you can and <laughs> you could put arms on that couldn't you a couple of arms some yes. legs and a head yes maybe mr. mr steve's head can go on there there you go this is what mr steve will look like if he eats well, that, too much that's out of proportion so i actually look slim Oh, I see. <laughs> there you go. Hello, I'm I Mr. Do think it's are, are we advertising Heinz mayonnaise, by the way? Well, we are now. Are we being uh, sponsored by Heinz? Heinz? Maybe as is. you would just probably pronounce it if you were in uh, Germany. Heinz. Hmm. But there is something. There is something so amazing about mayonnaise. Mr. I don't know Duncan why. Does like mayonnaise? I do like mayonnaise. I could just, I could just put my finger in there now and eat the mayonnaise. Rose has made a good point there that uh, Belarusia has been uh, celebrating for at least the last seven days. <laughs> oh, I see. It's been one long party at Belarusia's house. I like I like the idea of that. That's great. So you celebrate your birthday for a whole week. I like it. But uh, I think it was a special birthday, wasn't it? It's a bit like a Chinese funeral. Wasn't they, it the big 4-0? Chinese funerals go on for many, many days. Uh, yes. Are you comparing Belarusia's 40th birthday celebrations with a, with a funeral in China? 50th. 50th? Oh, but Belarusia, you don't look 50. You don't look anywhere near that. You see, that's why I said 40. Belarusia will think I'm wonderful now. <laughs> <laughs> At last somebody does. Strolling, listening to music, going out for a dance. Going disco dancing. Not that we say that anymore, do we? <laughs> do we say disco dancing? What do we say? Going out to a club. I nearly yes. went out to a, a dance club last night. You go clubbing. Go clubbing. That's it. Uh, but I think I'm a bit old for it now. But I used to find that uh, was, was uh, very stress relieving. Um, but there we go. What have I pronounced correctly? Yes, Heinz. Heinz. So, so this particular brand that we are not being sponsored by at all. You, you pronounce it Heinz. Heinz. If you were German. If you were German. Here we... Z is pronounced with a T apostrophe S. Here we... And uh, I believe also that, that if it's that way round, the, because it's an I and an E and an I, but you pronounce the I, don't you? If the E was the other way round, we would say uh, Heinz. Uh, but the I comes after the E, so we, we pronounce the I. <laughs> it's not quite as 
poetic is Heinz is it hints can you pass me the hints please so we pronounce the Z as a Z but the Germans pronounce it as a T apostrophe T apostrophe S yeah, this is this is and going swimming Yes. So we're, we're teaching German now, Mr. Duncan. Amazing. Well, you are. <laughs> I only know that from uh, from having to sing in German. I still haven't worked uh, out. I still haven't worked out what I'm teaching. <laughs> it's some kind of English, Mr. Duncan. Do you like my uh, thing there? Look, are you learning to speak English, Mr. Duncan? Yes. Uh, some people said that this is because I'm on the left, but it isn't. This is something that you put on your car on the left. Well, L for left. All oh, right. The word left begins with L. On the see. left of what? You. Politically? You. OK. But, ah, yes, but, uh, yes. No, but you're on the right of me, aren't you? Or does everybody else see it the other way round? It's Mr Steve's taking over now. I'm just going for a lie down in a dark room. Bye. <laughs> no, but Mr Duncan, I don't know how you see it, you see, at, at home there. See, yeah, Mr. Duncan is on that, the right of me. That that is what people see at home. So there it is on the screen. There ah, it is. So, so you're I'm, on. So it's the reverse of reality. So in fact, on the screen, you're on the left of me. But what? me standing here, you're on the right of me. Oh, are you sure you didn't take any drugs last no, night? I'm talking the truth, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> no, but that's exactly what we look like. I I am on the left, and you're on the right. Yes, but in reality, we're the other way round. What? Yeah, because you're on the right of me. No, you I'm, are. I'm on the left of you. What? Whichever. Yeah, this is my right hand, and you're yes, you're that, there. That's your yeah, but that's your left and right. Yes, I know. Yeah, facing that way. Mm, exactly. But the camera's over there, facing this way, so it's reversed. Well, that's what I was getting at, Mr. Duncan. Anyway, I'm going to put this over my <laughs> face to cover the fact that I'm grimacing and making. Horrible faces at Mr. Duncan. And I'm going to put my sunglasses back on. Put those on, Mr. Duncan. I, I mean, I've got to put mine on I want as well. To, I want to remain anonymous. How is this educating people? It is, of course. Or think of all the wonderful words that we've used today. Rita says there, people with autism are benefiting from medicinal marijuana. That's it. I didn't know autism was, was, was a going to benefit from that but I know there are other conditions and that's probably one of them as well mm. I know if you've got severe pain uh, and I think it's also autism so that probably means it explains why it's for people with uh, uh, who are suffering from uh, sort of bad memory and things like that or got a bit of Alzheimer's as well Mm. Maybe that might be what Rita you've got. means or Alzheimer's. I think that's what you've got. Uh, autism is, is something else. But yes, it probably is used to treat autism because they don't know how. Yes, I, I've had Al Alzheimer's for years, I think. I think I've so. I've always had a very bad memory. In fact, mm. it was very embarrassing last oh, night, Mr. No. Duncan. Oh, no. Yeah, OK. I we, went to meet We've some only friends. got 15 minutes left, by right, the way. But we haven't even done the car things yet. Well, that's what I keep trying to do, but you keep right, nattering okay. on like an old woman. Shall I tell you about last night? Ooh, I went out. Thank you, Rosa. Rosa I likes went outside. Her glasses. Do you have any experience with the IELTS test? I don't because we speak English, you see. Mr. Duncan has, of course, because he's had to teach it. Uh, let and leave is confusing to me, says Rosa. Let and let. leave. Well, they're completely different words. They well, are. let. Let means allow and leave means to depart. That's it. Let me teach you how to speak English. That's it, yes. Anyway. I am now leaving. I, I've i spent a very long time today planning something that we're probably not going right. to have time to do. We will, because I can do it very quickly. You know how I can speed up and react to the moment, Mr Duncan. So, wait a second, wait a second. We are talking about cars and driving, because Mr Steve likes to drive. I and do. He, and he has a car. And at the beginning of today's lesson, you saw me driving the car. So now we are going to talk about words and idioms connected with driving and being on the road. Words and expressions connected with cars and driving. <laughs> you look like you've cut my car in half, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> Do you like that? Very good. Very I, good indeed. I must admit, I'm getting very creative. 
I'm going to have to examine my car later to see if you've damaged it in any way. Right, I'm going to read a little passage here, which I, uh, which I thought was very good. It's words connected with driving. And there are many words connected with driving and many differences between this. Actually, this passage here highlights the fact that within the words and expressions used in driving, there are, there are a lot of phrasal verbs. Yes. A lot of phrasal verbs, which are... What sort of actions, Mr. Duncan, within well, the, a phrase? The, 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 Explain what that is. They're like metaphors. So right. they, are, they are words or sentences that, that exp express something without directly giving the meaning or, or the, the actual action. Uh, ah, but it's, some, it's describing some kind of action. That's it, yes, it, metaphorically. There is a specific vocabulary associated with driving words, but some of them, and I've picked out a few... Uh, have other meanings in everyday English as well. And I will mention some of the differences uh, in the American and English words. Do you want me to do that, Mr. Duncan? Nah. He doesn't, but I will do anyway. For example, in, in the UK, the, the piece of glass in front of you uh, as you're driving, we call it the windscreen, but in America they call it the windshield. Much the same, really. Uh, the, uh, the boot... In England is where you, you, you store or put all your shopping in the boot of the car at the back. In America, they call it the trunk. Not quite sure why, but it, the boot in England, the trunk in America. And then you've got the, the bonnet, which is the covering over the engine. Or in America, you would say the hood. So I'm just going to read out a very quick passage here, uh, which describes words connected with driving. When you get in your car, you fasten your seatbelt and start the engine by turning or switching on the ignition. Most cars in the US are automatic, whereas in Britain, most people still drive a manual car where you have to change gear. Or in the US, you would say shift gears by using the gear lever or the gear shift. You would say in America, you start driving in first gear and then you move up through the gears. So you move up into higher gears, into second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, etc. Before changing gear, you press the clutch pedal, which is the pedal on the left. Uh, and then you operate it with your foot. It is important to let the clutch out gently, otherwise you can stall the car, make it stop going. Uh, to go faster, you press the accelerator or the accelerator pedal. This causes the car to accelerate or move much faster or to speed up. In order to slow down or decelerate, you need to press the brake pedal. Uh, break is also a verb and in commonly used in the phrases break gently or break sharply. Break sharply, of course, means to break very suddenly. At junctions, which are places where roads intersect one another, and in fact in America they call them uh, intersections, you need to press uh, the... Uh, oh, oh, I've got lost here, Mr Duncan. <laughs> At junctions or intersections, as they say in America, uh, you stop completely. You need to put on the handbrake it's interesting or that use the emergency brake. It's interesting that Steve's reading is similar to his driving. He gets lost a lot. <laughs> he gets lost. I've gone off track, Mr Duncan. I've, I've gone off the main road onto the side road. You can see what happens. I, I, I disappear for a few moments and then Steve just goes, I have no idea where I am. Let me carry on, Mr Duncan. The writing's very small. Miss, wide roads such as motorways, or in the US they call them highways, have two or more lanes. Or three in the UK. Sometimes they have five or six in the US. The inside lane, or the slow lane, is where you drive until you need to overtake or pass another vehicle. Then you pull out, moving into the middle lane or the fast lane by looking in the rear view mirror. 
Do you like this, Mr. Duncan? It's very good. You don't, Mr. Duncan doesn't know how to drive. <laughs> when you've passed the other vehicle, you pull in again. If you pull over... So you pull out to overtake, you pull back in after you've overtaken. But if you pull over, that means you stop on the side of the road or into a lay-by. So somebody in the back of the car might feel a bit sick and say, oh, pull over quickly, I'm going to be sick. Or the policeman might look at you and say, pull over because you've committed a speeding offence. Uh, when you want to turn left or right, you indicate or signal if you're in America, using the indicator or the turn signal. To drive backwards, you reverse. For example, you might reverse into a parking space. If your car breaks down, it stops working. And if you run out of petrol, or gas, as they call it in America, you will need to fill up your petrol tank. But don't fill up your petrol tank with diesel, Mr Duncan, or you will break down again. Didn't you do that? I did do that, but I didn't put much in and I got away with it. So you fill up at a petrol station or a gas station if you're in America. Now, incidentally, do you know what uh, Americans call uh, the fuel that we put into a car gas? Gas. But we call it petrol. Petrol. Do you know why that is, Mr. <laughs> do I know why? I'm asking you. Well, I, well one is gasoline... And well other, done. And, and the other one is petroleum. So it's just basically the two words that are... There's no flies on you, Mr Duncan. There are no flies on me. Which but means that... he's very clever and quick and fast. Yes, uh, petroleum is, is basically just the black oil that comes out of the ground, unrefined oil. And uh, so when it's refined... It's refined into lots of different fractions or lots of different parts. And one of those parts that comes off is, is gasoline. Uh, so gasoline is actually the correct phrase for what goes in to a petrol powered car or gasoline. So that's why they, so the Americans actually, that is the correct phrase to say gasoline or gas. So if you say petrol, Petrol is short for petroleum, which is unrefined black oil. So, so what so about... In fact, the Americans are correct. What about diesel? Diesel is uh, another part of what comes off petroleum or unrefined oil. Uh, but diesel comes... I, I, now, there used to be... There, there was a German man called Diesel who invented the diesel car. Uh, I can't remember what his first name was, but... The man, the diesel is called diesel, I think, because uh, of the man that invented it in Germany. Mr. Diesel. Mr. Diesel was his name. That is correct. How can we don't see any Mr. Diesels around anymore? Hello, I'm Mr. Diesel. Well, I hope you like that, even though I went off track a bit. Mis Mr. Steve was driving on the road and then he swerved and then he lost all of his words and he went careering, careering off. off. Careering off. Careering off. Just as you would if you were driving. Now, I've picked out a few words here. Wait there a uh, second. I've got something to show you as well because we were talking about diesel. But here's another thing. Here's another thing. Sometimes they call diesel derve. It, that's in America, isn't it? Yeah. So so what, what does that uh, come from? I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know where that comes from. Because you used to derve. see the sign here as well. Uh, in the 70s and 80s, they used to put derve as well. On oh, garages, they would put petrol and derve, derve. And I, I, I was wondering why people use the word derve. Maybe somebody can tell us. Why do you say derve for diesel? Of course, in America, they don't use very much diesel at all. No. I think sort of 90% of their cars are powered by petrol, whereas in the UK, it's about 50-50. And I think in most of Europe, it's probably in the rest of Europe. I think they're probably more pow cars are powered by diesel than petrol. Mm. But of course, that's in reverse now because diesel is a dirty fuel, gives off lots of particulate matter. So they're trying to ban it. Apparently, it's Rudolph. Rudolph diesel. Rudolph. I don't think that's right. That doesn't sound right, does it? Might be. It might be right. Well, well, you're saying it doesn't sound right, but you don't know what the answer is anyway. I don't. Well, it, might be, I, it might be Rudolph. Could be Rudolph. Would, wouldn't it be funny if they called it Rudolph instead of Diesel? I've got to go to the garage to get some Rudolph. I've got to put some Rudolph in my car 
I, I'm look I'm running low on Rudolph is it strange to drive on the left side I don't know is it strange to drive on the right side it's all we know is, is it strange it's to, all we know well some people might say it's strange to drive anywhere we're used to driving on the left but of course when you go abroad most countries drive on the right uh, and in fact apparently the only reason we drive on the left is because we wanted to do the complete opposite to what Europe were doing <laughs> we were just awkward we just thought no Europe are driving on the right this is probably well over 100 years ago <laughs> uh, we're going to drive on the left so <laughs> so, you. so as you can see the, the British have been awkward for a very long time we are we are an awkward nation of awkward people and that, that's probably why we have Brexit on the way. We are talking about cars Brexit. today. Cars today. We're talking about cars and being on the road. Words and expressions connected with cars and driving. <laughs> it just looks like my car's cut in half, Mr. Well, I couldn't that's very good. I couldn't fit the rest of the car on because it's it's too big. Here's three little words that I've picked out from that statement words that uh, are used to describe uh, the, the, a car connected with driving but also in, in other uh, other examples as well so stall stall so in a car if you if you talk about stalling in a car it means you cause the engine to stop suddenly so or the vehicle to come to a halt you can stall the car or the engine and that's usually in a manually driven car when you are you can stall at traffic lights you can stall at a junction because you're not operating the clutch effectively and if you bring the clutch out too quickly the engine stops yes yeah, so and you stall the car also if, if is it true also if the revs the the, the revs of the engine are too low yeah it, well that's what it, happened it can stall that's what's happened you, you the, the revs anyone that drives a manual car will have experienced when they're learning stalling the car mm. at junctions which is very embarrassing because you then have to restart the car again and get the car in the right gear and you hold everybody else up behind you so you're stalling the car uh, my car stalled at the traffic lights I stalled my car uh, on the driving test and failed uh, but to to stall uh, outside the car means to, you means to delay or put off an action. So if you delay or put off an action, you stall something. So for example, uh, you get in the car and start the engine while I stall him for a few moments. Uh, you stall them for a few minutes while I get the presentation ready. So you could. Uh, for example, if I was going to say something, Mr. Duncan, and uh, I wasn't quite prepared, I might whisper to you, well, carry on talking while I just get this ready. Stall them, meaning you, the viewers, yes. while I'm getting myself ready. Stall for time. Stall for time. Uh, but a stall is also a separate area where an animal is kept. Mm -hmm. So if you keep an animal in a stall, it's a small little area fenced off where the animal is kept the animal stall hmm. so a, an area that is designated for one thing can be called a stall also the old-fashioned word for you know when you go to the toilet oh this, I was about to say that mr. Duncan this is for men oh you you then you say it a small enclosed space used for a particular purpose for example a bathroom stall which can be a shower uh, but quite commonly in America, they call the stall the area where men go to the toilet. It's well, it's, it, well, it's the enclosed area bit where you would go for a number two, I believe. So it's that's not, a stall. isn't it? I think it is. Oh, okay. I might be wrong, but it's a small enclosed area or space. Right. The other one is clutch. <laughs> so we heard the word clutch in that last passage to describe. A clutch is a device which allows turning movement to be sent from one part of, ma of a machine to another. So in the case of an engine, you've got the engine which is turning round and round and round. Uh, and that is then connected via the clutch to the gearbox and then to the 
prop shaft that drives the wheels. So you're transferring the uh, revolving uh, uh, energy of the engine onto the driving wheel. So a clutch allows that to happen uh, and it, because you need to be able to change gear for it all to work properly. So there we go. Are you getting this? <laughs> uh, just a little quick uh, lesson in car uh, mechanics there. This is how, uh, this is how the engine of, of a car works. Well, what you need to do is when, when you're changing gear, you need to disengage the engine from the gearbox so that you can change gear, move into a, into, a, into a different cog. And you can't do that while it's connected, while the driving wheels are connected to the engine. Uh, so you have to use a clutch which then disengages the engine from the drive shaft, which is going to the wheels. And then when you change the gear, you then l let the clutch back out again, which closes the plates uh, connects, uh, seals that connection back from the engine through to the driving wheels. So that's what a clutch does. But also, it's if you hold tightly onto something, often because you're frightened, then that's clutching on. So if I was to see one of those big spiders that we have in there com coming into this room, <gasps> I might clutch onto Mr. Duncan in fear. Oh, of my life because there's a big spider coming I, in. I got worried then. Uh, the child clutched on to his mother. It's not Friday. Fear. It's not Friday night. Uh, a small group of eggs. <laughs> What's that, Mr. Duncan? <laughs> I thought it was Saturday night anyway. Uh, a small group uh, of eggs inside a nest is a clutch of eggs. So if you've got a sparrow that lays four or five eggs in a nest, you describe that as a clutch of eggs. You can also use it, but it's not very commonly used these days. You, a, a small group of people, apparently, you, you, would, you could also describe as a clutch hmm. or a small group of animals, but you don't usually use that like chickens, expression today. Chickens or hens. Yes, a small group you could call a clutch. So a group of chickens. <laughs> That was a terrible impression but of a chicken. A small, uh, a small bag uh, without a handle or a clasp that uh, often used by women to hold small personal items is called a clutch. Mm. Mm. So it's a small little bag. Mm. Just maybe it's got a little fastener on the front. Mm. You just you're clutching onto it. You're holding onto it, mm. and it's got a few personal items in it. Ooh, personal. Are you doing, Mr. Duncan? I'm just looking inside my clutch. <laughs> a small bag. Mr. Duncan hasn't got a clutch. So a small bag that women might carry. You don't want a big handbag, handbag over your shoulder. Just a small little bag, just to carry a few personal items in. Is called a clutch. What about Burberry? Burberry this week. They apparently they burn all of the stuff they don't sell. I met somebody last night. So when they don't sell the stuff, the, the stuff they don't sell, they just they just burn. They incinerate it because they don't want they don't want plebeians like us getting hold of their very expensive clothing. So that's ah. why they burn all the clothes. So you won't find Burberry clothes at uh, discount outlet stores like TK Maxx. Like TK Maxx we've got here, yes. Well, I mean, if you want to protect your brand, that's what you've got to do. I mean, uh, food manufacturers burn all their unused food, don't so, they? Some, some people were getting very angry because they said that Burberry should be giving all of the clothes away to charity. Now, I I don't know if you've seen some of the Burberry clothing, but it is really horrible. It's stuff that you would never wear in a million years. So I, I'm, I just have this wonderful image of people who, who are sleeping rough. And they're all wearing this Burberry clothing, yes. very colourful. I mean, it would be it would be nice to see, I'm sure. But I, I, I would I wouldn't wear half of that stuff, even if you paid me to wear it. Well, if uh, I yes, that's a difficult subject, isn't it? I mean, if you if you built up uh, an exclusive brand and you want that to remain exclusive then uh, you would, if you've got clothes left over, you wouldn't want them to be given out and to be worn by people that... Uh, well, for example, I mean, I would imagine Burberry clothes are very expensive. They are. So... Just, uh, just for a coat, it's about 
maybe four or five thousand pounds well that's it so if you it say you are somebody who can afford to spend four thousand pounds on a burberry coat <laughs> you wouldn't want to see uh somebody walking on the streets uh you know who's driving around in a beaten up old car wearing the same coat as you or an expensive coat what about homeless because then that would you would think well i'm not going to buy another burberry coat because anyway everyone's wearing them but now. what about homeless people well that's it you wouldn't want to, you you know if you were spending that much money so i don't you know i can see why they want to do that but of course you know it's still a waste of clothes what but a, I'm sure what a horrible anyway. what a horrible world we live in don't you think so it's always been like that they're saying thinking. they're saying we don't want common people or or dirty people or poor people wearing our clothes we only want wealthy people who have more money than cents well did you know did you know that car manufacturers such as mercedes <laughs> If what happens is they make lots of cars, <laughs> do, they, do they do they do they crush them when they don't sell them? <laughs> they do. <laughs> Mr. Duncan, I was talking to somebody who works for Mercedes. They, they destroy when I took my car in for a service. And what happens is and they all the manufacturers do the same thing. If they they, for example, make 10,000 cars and export them to the UK or to any any country. If after a period of time they don't sell them, because often the cars aren't made to order, which means that you don't, that they just make a lot of them, that you, they're not making them to order. And if, if they're left for, for a period of time at the docks or wherever they come in, they're all sent back and crushed. They don't sell them off cheaply for anybody to buy. I thought They you'd... send them back to wherever they were manufactured and then they crush them. So what do they do with the big, the big metal cubes afterwards? They melt it down. And then they turn them into new Mercedes. And they turn them into new Mercedes. That yeah, doesn't. That, 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 that you is... see, Ford and Vauxhall uh, manufacturers like that would to get rid of cars that they've overmade. They would sell them off cheaply. Mm. They put them in Christmas crackers, <laughs> uh, sort of half price. But manufacturers like Mercedes and and, and I, I don't know whether Audi, Audi probably the same, BMW. Uh, from Sco what I Skoda what no Skoda won't you see they'll sell them off cheaply they I was told by this this uh, man who worked for Mercedes that uh, they don't sell them off cheaply they send them back to Germany and they're crushed and recycled back into new cars oh. there we go so traffic traffic oh that wasn't in my little uh, speech earlier uh, but as we know traffic is is in fact the amount or the volume or the number of vehicles on the road in the case of cars but traffic can also refer to uh, uh, marine traffic so it can be boats and aircraft traffic so you can have for example the uh, aircraft traffic has increased by 30 percent over the last 10 years uh, is a phrase that we often hear now aircraft traffic or the amount of traffic the amount of aircraft that are flying has increased dramatically over the last few years, over the last one. Well, it's constantly increasing. Yes. Uh, traffic can also refer to uh, something like Internet traffic, the activity uh, of messages and data mm. passing through communication channels. So it can be phone traffic, telephone traffic. You can have lots of people all talking on the lot, lots of people phoning all the time. So it can be telephone traffic or it can be on a website or some kind of system. You can have Internet traffic, Twitter traffic. Uh, that's how that can be described. So the people that follow or watch something on the Internet, we can call that traffic. Quite often traffic is two way as well. So we, that's right. you can have you can have traffic going in a certain direction, but quite often traffic is both ways. So, for example, on the Internet, it's people uploading and downloading. So the traffic goes both ways quite often. That's it. Here's, an, here's another example of using the word traffic. We, are on, we can give you advice on how to improve your site traffic and generate more sales. Yes. So There's the, always people out there trying to advise you. So the site and, uh, is the place, the, the Internet site Tomek has oh. been very clever and has come up with another use of the word traffic, which I was going to mention after this. So well done, Tomek. Yes. Uh, 
uh, it's almost, buying or selling it, illegal goods. This almost goes back to what we were talking about earlier with the old uh, marijuana. Yes. So well done. If you if you uh, it can be anything. It doesn't have to be just drugs. But if you're if you're buying if you if you're selling eggs from birds, that's illegal in this country. That that could be described as illegal traffic, uh, illegal goods. Uh, but commonly, it's used uh, to describe uh, drugs. Mm. So uh, things that are prohibited or illegal or not allowed, and you secretly take them from one place to another. Yes. You traffic some drug trafficker was arrested at the airport. So to traffic can be a verb. You traffic. Exactly. Smuggle. 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 You're trafficking, moving, dealing in illegal substances or goods. So that's a few words from that uh, little speech I gave earlier. A lot of people asking, what does the L mean? It means learner learner yeah. so you often see this on the back of a car or the front of a car and the person driving it is learning to drive we haven't got time for the test unfortunately oh today any more words have we got time for any more words a couple of more we'll, we'll stay on for another five minutes right. right okay then right mr duncan you are in the driver's seat okay so if you're in the driver's seat Literally, that means you're you're driving the car, but it can also means that you're in charge, you're in control. So it doesn't have to just relate to driving a car or a vehicle. So Mr. Duncan is in the driving seat when it comes to his live English lessons. Uh, but sometimes Mr. Duncan might put me in the driving seat and let me just talk by myself. So there we go. Mr. Duncan is now put me in the driving seat. I'm under pressure to perform in front of everybody. Uh, you can use the synonym synonym hot seat as well would be a similar uh, phrase to being in the driving seat. Somebody at work might say your boss might say there's a new project at work and you might say, right, I'm putting you in the driving seat as far as this project's concerned. Report back to me in two weeks. So it means you're in charge of something. It doesn't have to be just driving. Now, do you live life in the fast lane? Mr. Duncan does not live life in the fast lane, and nor do I. It means to have an exciting, possibly risky lifestyle. Very busy, very fast paced. Uh, for example, oh, uh, uh, after they moved to London, they lived a fast paced life. And uh, lived life in the fast lane. It means that they were working hard, going out in the evening, partying, going on risky holidays, abseiling, doing all sorts of risky things, just le leading a very busy, fast paced life. And it could possibly be, be risky because they could get sick because they're doing too much all the time or they might do some risky activity. So if somebody says to you, you're living life in the fast lane, then it means you're just living a very busy, active lifestyle and you've probably got lots of money and you're wealthy. Uh, those L's, we put those on the back of our cars in the UK to denote that we are, are not haven't yet passed the driving test. Mm -hmm. uh, test drive. Test drive. So if I see a nice car in a showroom and, oh, that car looks very nice, but how does it drive... Then I will go to the dealer and say, can I take that car out for a test drive? So you go out for a period of time. It could be half an hour. It could be you might even have it for a couple of days. Uh, but you take that vehicle out for a test drive. But uh, uh, but you can test you can test out an idea. You can test drive an idea. So, uh, for example, uh, at work, the new promotional materials are out. Why don't you test drive them on a few of your customers and then report back and tell us how it went? So like like trial, a trial. Exactly. Trial. Test drive an idea. You try it out to see how well it works. Oh, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Backseat driver. Is this your mum? Backseat driver. Anyone that drives will have had the experience of somebody, a passenger. Who sits there? 
sometimes in the back seat, sometimes in the front seat, giving you advice on how to improve your driving. Oh, do you have to drive so fast? Do you, do, do you have to drive? Oh, slow down a minute. Slow down. Look, look, look. You're going too fast. Look, this is a 30 mile an hour zone. You're going too too fast. Slow yes. down. Don't come off at that junction. Come off at the next junction. Yes, you shouldn't oh, be going. No, that's not the way you go. You're in the wrong gear. Change no. up to another gear. Yeah. Anyone who's experienced that knows how no annoying it is because it's often very easy in a lot of situations, particularly in driving, needs a lot of concentration and somebody just watching and observing can often pick faults but if they are quite often backseat drivers don't drive themselves have no idea what it's like to drive but somehow think that they can tell you how to drive backseat driver but it doesn't have to just apply to, to driving you can use that expression in in in, in other in for, for other things that happen in life uh, and you can describe someone as a backseat driver if they they don't do something but they're criticizing other people that do do a particular thing so they they are not actively involved but they they are very quick to give advice on the thing that they don't actually do that's right so for example people we we talk to people don't we about about what mr duncan does with teaching english and people have no idea whatsoever they have no idea try to give advice to mr duncan so you can describe them as they're like a backseat driver yes Often when we come on, this is the last word, Mr. Duncan. OK, before good. the live stream starts every Sunday, we should say to all the viewers out there, fasten your seatbelts. This is going to be a wild ride. So when you fasten your seatbelts in a car, it's to protect you against the possibility of having an accident. Uh, so it's indicating that a situation is becoming risky dangerous or possibly unpleasant it's obviously risky to drive a car so you put a seatbelt on but if you fasten your seat say if you had a new boss at work and everybody got a reputation from coming from another department and everybody knew he sort of fired people and shouted at people he might and suddenly he's assigned to your new department somebody might say oh fasten your seat belts we've got a new we've got that new boss from accounts it's going to be it's going to get very heated in here over the next few months so to indicate something wild is about to happen over a period of time uh fasten your seat belts for the next hour and a half it's mr duncan's live english show <laughs> anything could happen it's risky yes a lot of people reacting to this today i i wasn't sure how how well this would go down but a lot of people reacting here's here's one of my own mr steve so here's mine and something that's been mentioned already Sunday driver Sunday driver that's a, a good one a Sunday driver oh. uh, and I thought that was suitable because today is Sunday very good what? Sunday driver so a Sunday driver is someone who goes out and they they never go over a certain speed wherever they are if they're on the motorway or a main road or a small road they always drive at the same speed very very slowly and carefully and they drive like everything a Sunday driver is somebody it, who drives very infrequently and as a result of that or they tend to go out when the weather's nice on a Sunday afternoon they tend to be probably elderly uh, they don't drive very much and of course they lose their skills in driving and as a result of that are driving very slowly and annoying everybody else and holding everybody else up on the road my father used to always talk about oh look at these sunday drivers get out of the way i've got some, <laughs> i've got to get to my destination jeff interestingly enough <laughs> said fasten your seat belts are you set mr duncan jeff's got in a use of the word set i can always rely on jeff it's not it's not happening uses of the word well we're, we're virtually getting them all in every week yes but there are about 400 of them so it will take about another eight or nine years to actually cut, get through all of them thank For you lewis fortunately thank you lewis mendez said we're giving useful words i like to i can talk about cars all night you can all afternoon but you will be doing that by yourself oh, right <laughs> Mr. Duncan, we are not backseat drivers. We are just students and we thank you for your efforts. And of course, Mr. Steve, ah. thank you, Hasna, for that. That is just about it. Before we go, I'm going to show you some. Oh, what? What's up? Leon Steve? says, what time are we going to be here next Sunday? 
well every week we are with you at the same time i will show you now on the screen so every week it is the same time live english sunday 2 p.m uk time and also on wednesday 10 p.m uk time late and live so they are the times we are on twice a week sunday 2 p.m wednesday 10 p.m don't forget they are both uk time so you have to work out the time difference for yourself okay we are almost out of time well in fact we are out of time i thought before we go we would have a little look in the garden and okay. this is a this is a live shot of the dunculus oh. oh look now i have a very sad tale to tell you about this plant because during the winter it was completely destroyed by the snow we had three lots of snow uh, during the winter that has just passed but as you can see the dunculus the dunculus has come back it is back and it's looking very very healthy it is revived so well done to the dunculus for for making a very brave comeback as i always say nature always finds a way nature will always find a way to survive it's true so we'll have one last look at the live chat and then we are going oh look jamila has put uh, lots of car emojis on the screen thank you very much for that i love your car emojis <laughs> well it looks like a police car an ambulance a taxi a fire engine uh, a blue car an orange car uh, that looks like an suv and also a van or lorry a sport so, utility vehicle an suv very popular now used to be uh it came from the united states and now everyone wants one in the uk suv despite the fact that they're very heavy and use up a lot more fuel than the, than the ordinary car on which their saloon car on which they're based they are not very environmentally friendly to be honest but everyone feels safe because they're higher up uh a crossover vehicle is uh is somewhere between a hatchback uh, or a small saloon car and an SUV. Yeah. So you've got you've got the saloon car, and then you've got the SUV, which is the, the the jacked up or higher version of the saloon car. And in between, you've got the you've got the crossover uh, <laughs> vehicle, which are becoming popular now because they're cheaper I think than the SUV. Anyway, we're running anyway, out of time. Anyway, I could talk about cars all night, as you know, Mr. Duncan. Yes, you've said this already, and I, I feel as if it is going on all night. To Good be afternoon, everybody. Please say my name. Please, can you say goodbye to me? Goodbye, Blue Thunder. Goodbye, Irene. Goodbye, Ute. Goodbye, JC Jordy. Good uh, goodbye, Anna. We are going. It lorry is... in England, truck in the US. That is correct. Yes, we say we say lorry here, or HGV, of course, heavy goods vehicle, and they say truck, truck in the US. Salad Salad Ahmed says thanks Mr Duncan goodbye and thank you to Burlop thank you very much Lewis or Louise says I am sorry Mr Duncan those plants in winter almost disappear and they come back in spring yes but they were growing back and then the snow came and destroyed them completely they were completely destroyed so we thought we thought the plant was dead it looked dead it for a long time didn't revived it revived itself goodbye obey goodbye damien chris tomek leon salad patricia Put estes goodbye and see you i should be here on wednesday lydia i love that name lydia lydia oh lydia Ta -ta, jeff Ta -ta. have you have you seen lydia Lydia the tattooed lady C Y A. what does that stand for blue thunder has uh, used no his... see ya oh see ya <laughs> see ya <laughs> see yes, ya blue it, thunder it's what the youngsters say now it's what the young the young people say now seki star goodbye from japan <laughs> with their video games and their roller skates and their nintendos goodbye vodka drinker milton i love that name by the way milton milton yes that, you don't see that that uh, you don't see that uh, 
word very often anymore, do you? No, you don't. It's the name of a poet, of course. Yes, it's a lovely name. That's... I met somebody last night like, whose name was Sam. Sam. Yes. P S A L M. I don't know. You're telling me. Sam. You're Let telling me. me. Down. Have we got time? No, we no, haven't got time to write time. down somebody's name who I've never met, and, and probably it's not coming up right on the subtitles anyway. P S A L M. It's a it's psalm as in a passage like like a biblical passage. Mm. Psalm. And his name was Psalm. psalm. I've never heard that it was a lovely name. I kept getting it wrong though, and he was quite annoyed. But then when I knew what it was, uh, we were best friends forever. Oh, great! But no marijuana. I uh, no. Oh, good. I'm very pleased to hear that. We are going now. This is Mr. Duncan. That's me and. Mr. Steve saying that's me. Thanks for watching us. Thanks ever such a lot for tuning in for the past hour and 55 minutes. We are back on Wednesday, 10 p.m. UK time. So we will see you then. Thanks, Mr. Steve. Thank you. I'm going off to put the tea cakes on because I'm making tea cakes and tea for Mr. Duncan and, and myself. I am right so, now. I'm so hungry. Bye bye. And Mr. Steve has now gone. We will go. We will all go. It is time to disconnect from the Internet and it's time to allow my computer to cool down and for Mr. Steve to change his underwear. I will see you on Wednesday, 10 p.m. UK time. And well, it's been an interesting one today on a very hot day. I hope you will stay cool during the week and I will try my best to stay cool here because the temperature apparently is going to get very very high very high indeed this is Mr Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for following me and watching me and I will see you later on and of course you know what's coming next yes you do ta-ta for now Words and expressions connected with cars and driving.